Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas and today we're going to be talking about Nano Banana Pro. Now, if you've been pretty active on social media and have looked at these all of these different examples of Nano Banana Pro, for example, I think the main one is like consistent characters. For example, this guy over here with Dio DiCaprio in the movie scene, um, we have with Christian Bale and we have with more actors over here with The Matrix and with Forrest Gump. And if you zoom in, it looks incredibly realistic in terms of the pixelation, in terms of the 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 you know lettering over here if we even zoom in over here we can see it says savannah so it's like savannah georgia right even the bus stop says it there's some trash on the on the side so it's like extremely realistic it's not polished it doesn't look like a mid-journey image we can also see that this guy you know he's been he's wearing a sweater with a little graphic over here and it keeps it consistent throughout all of the different images and the quality is just extremely good right it gets all the characters right, it gets like the expressions right, it gets the environment right. And we're going to talk about five different topics when it comes to Nano Banana Pro and UX UI design. And before we get into it, I would love to invite you guys to my Discord community where a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers from all around the world. And we get together every single weekday to talk about different tools, different topics, different challenges in our lives. So if you guys are interested in joining these calls, feel free to join, the link is down in the description below. So first off, how do you get to use Nano Banana Pro? Well, there are a bunch of different wrappers, there's like different tools out there, I, I guess like Weavy or like Flora Fauna that integrate Nano Banana Pro into their you know system. But the original, the OG version is inside of Google AI Studio. So basically you have to go to aistudio.google.com to reach AI Studio. And you're going to get something like this, right? You have the home, you have the playground, you have the build, the dashboard and the documentation. And then down here you have get API key, which is very important if you want to use Nano Banana Pro. So go to the API key, get API key and create a new API key if you want to use it. And under usage and billing, you can see how often you've used your API key. So I've been using it since end of November. And yes, today, today is December 8th. I've been using it quite a lot. I use 66 total API requests. And if we go to billing over here, you can get kind of like an overview of how much you have to pay through these these dates. So it's it's, it's not a lot. It is quite expensive in comparison to other uh, APIs, but it's still not so bad. Anyways, what I do is I go to the playground over here. I click on playground and this is where we get our view, right? We have, you for, first of all, you have to choose your API key. So I have all of my different API keys. I have one by default. So I'm just gonna select this one. And this is where the magic starts, right? Now that you have your API key set, you can start generating images. You can start creating designs with Nano Banana Pro. And the first topic that I want to talk about is UX optimizations in general, right? You get an image from a website or for an app, and then you bring it in here and you ask the AI to help you out by annotating different things that you can improve, right? Maybe you can add a filter somewhere. Maybe you can increase the size of the text over here, reduce the white space in, an, in another certain area. And I came up with this idea because I saw these like initial things and like these initial templates, right? And it says, create an illustrated explainer detailing the physics of the fluid dynamics or create an orthographic blueprint or a fashion product collage. So it, it's really good at taking images and and kind of like, explaining them in a, in a more visual way. So I said, you know, let's try it out with, with, an, with a UI, right? And I can just take a screenshot of this over here. You go like this, boom, and I can paste it back in here. And then I can say, could you draw over this image and annotate the potential UX design improvements? You can click on run. And then we get things like improve active state visibility, make sidebar collapsible, or simplify the car layout, clarify temperature for users, example, creativity or add tooltips. So it, it gives you some cool ideas of how to optimize the, the entire UX. And to give you another example, I gave it a, a live website, Instacart, and I gave it this promotional page, which is like the seasonal page where you say it's, it's Instacart deck more than just the halls, it's for Christmas and you have holiday trees. And then if you scroll down, you have like lights and all this stuff. And then I asked it the same thing. I'm like, could you draw over this image and annotate the potential UX design improvements? And what it does, it does just that, right? It gives us enhanced store information. So add the location, the, the hours of the store, um, add a product ratings. Right now there's no product ratings, clear color size options. So it gives us some good ideas. And then inside of Magic Path, I can bring in this 
Instacart design, right? So this is all like real design from Instacart that I use with the Chrome extension tool. So basically what that is, is that you go over here, you choose the element that you want to copy. In this case, you want to choose the whole page, click on this, and then you just paste it into Magic Path and you get something like this. And now what you can do is you can say, you know, add or add the UX optim optimization points from at UX opt, click on enter, and then you want to submit this. And then basically what we have here is we have, all right, quick access card preview. I can click on this. We have a quick access card preview. If we go to over here to the enhanced store information, I can zoom in and it says, all right, North Hills, 3.2 miles away, open until 9 p.m. So it adds a little bit more information. Add product ratings and clear color size options. Over here, we can see we have the product ratings and we have the different color options. In this case, we, it just says pink or, or flocked or white. You can still ask Magic Path to adjust that design, but it gives us a good first version. The next thing that I want to talk about is mockups. So as a designer, you either create mockups for your agency website or for your your freelance freelancing portfolio, or maybe you're building out a website, an e-commerce website, and you want to have nice mockups of the specific product and like a nice environment. So for example, my good friend Rishav, he created this brand exploration with these different shapes, with this text in the middle, with these nice colors. And then he created a mockup with these exact same images. He brought in the image, used it inside of Nano Banana Pro, and basically created this nice like mockup of the three images inside of like a looks looks like a subway station. I, for example, the other day got this nice framer template, took a screenshot of the home page, and then with a single prompt, just brought it into a page, into a screen like this, a MacBook screen. You can clearly see that it, that it says MacBook Pro over here very, very lightly. So it's very, very detailed and it's pretty straightforward. We can go ahead and grab a screenshot again of this website, right, with multiple pages or multiple products. And then we can just add that API key. We just wanna make sure that we have it selected and we upload the file of that screenshot. And we can say something like paste the image as a mock-up screen on an Apple Studio display that is on a nice wooden desk with palm trees in the background, right? We can click on run. And as you can see, the design stays exactly how it is. As you can see, with the nice palm trees in the background, with the nice wooden desk, and with the Apple Studio display. Now, maybe you're designing a website that is going to be used in action, right? Let's say it's for a construction company, and they're going to be using it on a tablet in the outdoors. You want that image to look more real. So, for example, create a mock-up on a tablet with a hard blue cover that is being held by a construction worker close up to the tablet. Exactly what I imagined, right? We have these dirty hands, dirty gloves, very hard cover for the tablet just in case it, it drops. And then we have over here our tablet with our website on it. Now, another interesting topic is localization, right? So let's say that you're designing a, a website or an app and it's going to be used in different parts of the world, right? Japanese speakers, Arabic speakers, or Mandarin speakers. Not only do these countries use different symbols in their language, but you, they also have different UX, right? The different styles of placing the text and all of that. And as a prompt, I wrote down, generate a version of this in Japanese and, fo and following Japanese design principles. And this is the version that I got. So I got these nice decorative things in the sides. We still get the same structure, the same nav bar even, but all of this inside here has changed a little bit. So it's a nice little thing to kind of use to inspire yourself and create like a nice little ideation of how it would look like for other languages. So it changed out the layout a little bit, changed the, 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 the languages over here and the banner. So, and this comes to my next point, which is accessibility. You know, this is the next point that you can even use Nano Banana Pro to help you with. And by the way, guys, whenever you do this, I always tend to start a new playground because somehow, you know, you ask it to, you, you, you ask it to do a prompt and it somehow like forgets the information that you gave it before and it gives us a few accessibility options so accessible accessible search label cart icon label carousel arrow labels the navigation arrows need accessible names like previous or next and we can use that same process that we did for the ux optimizations but now for the accessibility so what we can do is we can just save this image and then inside of magic path i'm going to just duplicate this one over here bring this to the bottom and I'm going to insert our image. So we're going to insert it just like this. And we have accessibility OPT. I'm going to increase the size a bit. 
And I'm going to do the same prompt as I did up here. So just click on this. So I'm going to say, please add the accessibility optimization points from accessibility up to our current design. Let's go ahead and click on submit. And then it basically implements these different changes, right? You have all of these different changes that I gave you and you can basically just place it over here in magic path and get a live preview. Now, the next thing here is thumbnails and I'm a YouTuber. Yeah, sure. I make a lot of thumbnails, but you might have a product that has, you know, a, an academy, right? Like Framer Academy or like Webflow University, and you need consistent thumbnails throughout your design, right? Throughout your website so that you don't have to manually do them inside of Figma. You can just use Nano Banana for that. So in this case, I have this YouTube thumbnail and it's called YouTube 322 and I have actually a bunch of them. And if you want this file, please let me know. I'll give it to you guys so you can just copy it and just replace the design with, with your image, whatever. And this thumbnail says, you know, AI native UX design in 10 minutes. You have the Figma logo, you have the Magic Path logo. And I'm going to say replace the gradients to the back to blue, replace the Figma logo with the Framer logo, change the text to say, this is an example thumbnail and make the subject angry, which is me. And then if we scroll down, we get exactly that. We get our blue gradient background. We get angry me with the same, basically the same pose, just me being angry. And we get this new Framer logo instead of the Figma one, and we get this new text. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down in the comments below and join our Discord if you want to talk to us, to me and to the other subscribers of this channel. Like always, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.